Hello, everyone, and welcome. I'm Barry, and I'm delighted to be with you for the sixth and final episode in this series of live online conversations entitled From Doing Yoga to Being Yoga. I'm the author Hello, of, everyone. Oops. <laughs> I'm the author of Evolving Your Yoga, 10 Principles for Enlightened Practice. And in this series of talks, I'm sharing approaches to bringing your yoga off the mat and into your life in authentic and meaningful and purposeful ways. And today I am excited to speak with you about how yoga works to renew us on all levels and why it is so timely and important for all of us to have reliable strategies to renew and restore and refresh our energy. And I will be sharing four concrete strategies that I use pretty much on a daily basis and that you can as well to restore your body, mind, and spirit. So some of you may remember these, um, <clears throat> let's see if I can share my screen. Some of you may remember these, um, these old fashioned tape counters <laughs> that um, the, as you played your cassette tape, the numbers would go up and then you could just push this button and the numbers would reset themselves back to zero. Well, that was the way that I used my first experiences in yoga, that after class, I felt like my internal tape counter had been reset to zero. And at that time, I was working in an office in Midtown Manhattan. And so my reset included a kind of a release of the mental residue left over from my day at the office. It included a healthy distance from whatever current dramas were unfolding in my life. And also a sense of lightness and ease um, that comes, I think, from working accumulated tension and stress out of the body. So through focused attention to movement and consciously freeing the breath, I felt restored, reliably restored and ready to move on with my evening with renewed clarity, centeredness and presence of mind. And I think what I'm sharing is familiar to many of us. I think that we, we regularly experience something similar in terms of yoga's power to renew and restore us. We often, we know that um, often, hopefully at the end of a yoga class, we feel better. We might feel more calm, more clear, more grounded. We might feel more rejuvenated and refreshed in some way. We might feel even that sense of being reset. But how does it actually work? How, and why does yoga work in this way? This is something that, that in the class setting, we don't always have the time as teachers to explore and explain and educate students about. But it's, this is really important to understand because once we understand how and why yoga is so effective at creating this experience and feeling of renewal and restoration, its power and impact for us in our lives grows. Not only can we tailor and adapt our practices to provide us with the renewal we need, but we can also apply these principles and strategies to experience renewal in our daily lives. And let me just say how timely and important this is for all of us, right? Even before the global pandemic, we needed the ability to reset our internal tape counters. We live in an accelerating world that moves infinitely faster um, and more efficiently than even um, the wor my world of Midtown Manhattan did 20 years ago. So this just the sheer speed and volume of communication, this kind of never ending instantaneous flow of content coming at us, it's just mind boggling when you stop and think about it. And let's face it, it's not gonna slow down and diminish. So we've needed this for some time, but now over the past 18 months and for who knows how long going forward, there is so much that can drain us, that can exhaust us, right? That can tire us out, the onslaught of news, unpredictable routines, uncertainty, fear about the future. It can really um, overwhelm us understandably and leave us feeling exhausted and drained. Therefore, the importance of having reliable strategies to restore ourselves, to release stress, to 
quiet our minds is absolutely crucial to maintaining a sense of balance and harmony. It is vitally necessary for our well being and for the resilience that I think we all need to face the collective and individual challenges ahead of us. So not only must we prioritize the time dedicated to removing ourselves from the world of our screens, which of course yoga is a great thing to do, which of course yoga does. Um, we also need reliable and effective ways to restore a sense of calm as, as well as I think physical and energetic integrate, integration to our beings. And um, yoga, of course, is one of the best ways to do all of these things. It restores us on all levels. And not only is yoga class hopefully one of the last places where we disconnect our, from our devices for an hour or so, but you know, even more powerfully, I think, in practice, we bring the energy of the mind back into the body, away from this abstracted world of devices and screens and, and into the breath and into the organic physical reality of our material existence. And in doing so, I think there's a way that we reawaken to kind of our, our primitive and, and instinctual and sensual nature. And in this way, we, we give the mind a, a kind of resting place for the senses, an opportunity for them to pause from their outgoing movement. And um, I think this is one of the ways that we emerge with a renewed sense of clarity and balance from yoga. And um, this is what I want to talk a little bit more about today, the secret really to yoga's power of renewal. And I'm going to be sharing four specific ways to apply this understanding to reset your mind, restore your body and renew your spirit on a regular basis. Um, but before we get into that, I want to mention a couple of things. Um, at, first of all, if the content of these talks um, resonates with you, I'd love to invite you to try out my weekly on-demand classes. They bring together alignment-based asana practice with the wisdom teachings of yoga. And they're really designed for teachers and continuing students who wish to learn more about how to integrate yoga philosophy into their postural practice to take their practice deeper and begin to, um, or continue to expand the ways that yoga serves you in your life beyond the mat. And we have an amazing community of dedicated students and teachers from around the world. And on our platform, you get a brand new class every Saturday morning and classes are then added to a community library of over 150 classes, ever growing um, classes of all lengths and, um, and, and focuses we cover a wide range of syllabus a wide range of uh, poses in our syllabus. There is also a section for Q&A and comments in every class, and I'd love to share them with you. And if you'd like to try them out, you can, you, you can go to my website, which is my name, and use coupon code FREE15, F-R-E-E-1-5, -E -E and you'll get $15 off, which is the equivalent of about one month. The second thing I want to let you know about is that this series of talks has been generously sponsored by the team at Offering Tree. And Offering Tree, if you're not familiar with it, is an all-in-one platform that makes it really easy for yoga teachers and wellness professionals to sell courses, teach classes, and manage memberships. And so if you're a yoga teacher or a wellness professional that is seeking to grow your online presence, that's maybe been feeling overwhelmed with how to do this, um, Offering Tree can really help. They have a super user-friendly platform that, uh, that um, you can use to teach online, send Zoom links, accept payments, et cetera. And as I've gotten to know the team over at Offering Tree, I can also say that they are people that are really dedicated to some supporting the community of independent yoga teachers and wellness professionals. And you will not just be uh, another account to them. They will get to know you. They'll provide help. They have an amazing library of free resources that you can use. So you'll definitely want to check them out if expanding your online presence is something you've been wanting to do and, and wanting a simple, easy way to do it. So I'm going to put a, put a link in the comments when we're done here. And you can use that link to get 50% uh, off the first three months and $15, 15% off an annual plan with them. So I'll put that link at the end. Okay, so let's talk about the secret to yoga's power of renewal, because as I said, once we start to understand this, it kind of unlocks how we can apply these principles um, beyond the mat and in our lives in other ways. So in order to understand the secret uh, to, of yoga's power of renewal, I think we have to begin with the very fundamental teaching of yoga 
which is that we are, as human beings, part and parcel of something bigger than our individual selves. Whether we conceive of that as energy, as spirit, as God, as nature, as the heart, whatever we call it, yoga teaches that we have a connection to something bigger and grander and greater that, and that, that lives within us as our own truest, deepest selves, that within us, we have a connection to this universal presence or energy that also is our own deepest essence. And this energy, this essence within us is always full. It's never depleted. It is, it is a wellspring of energy, of aliveness, of enthusiasm and inspiration. And when we're able to align with and connect to this place within ourselves, it's like plugging into the source of our power. It's like when, and when we plug our devices and charge them, when we tap into this place within us, we get recharged, recharged. it restores us. And this is really uh, simply this is the secret to yoga's power of renewal that it takes our energy, our physical energy, our mental energy, the energy of our senses, our spirits, it takes them inward and connects us back to the source place where we find renewal. So by uh, unplugging from our outer lives for a little while through yoga practice, we actually give ourselves a chance to plug in to the most empowering and nourishing and reliable source of renewal we have, which is our own breath, our own awareness, our own inner being. And this is why after a yoga class, we emerge recharged, renewed, and bolstered to uh, meet our lives anew. And I think the, the, the process, I think that best and most clearly exemplifies this, as I mentioned earlier in the talk, is the practice of pratyahara, the, the withdrawal of the senses, which is one of the core practices of yoga, the, the withdrawal of the senses away from their outer objects and in toward their source. It's uh, often likened to a tortoise withdrawing its limbs or a wave subsiding back into the ocean. In yoga, in this practice of pratyahara, we shift the energy of our senses, which typically move outward to interact with the world around us. We move them back inward and we direct them back where they connect to their source. So think of how refreshing it is to simply close your eyes for a moment or to stand and stretch after working on the computer for a while, or how deeply rejuvenated you feel after a good night's sleep, or how taking a walk can help you to clarify a situation or solve a problem you've been thinking about. Likewise, by turning inward and taking ourselves out of our outer lives temporarily, the senses and our awareness have the chance to rest back into their source where, where they are renewed, energized, and sharpened. So again, that's really the secret to how yoga works to renew and restore us all on all levels by returning our energy and attention back toward the source place in our practices where we both empty out and we get filled up with new fresh energy. And this is why we feel renewed, restored, reset. So, how can we apply this understanding to amplify this for ourselves? I wanna share with you four specific renewal strategies based on this principle of returning to the source that address the body, the breath, the mind, and the spirit. The first, renewal in the body. I think the most important way to renew the body is to slow down, slow down movement. Um, maybe you remember that movie Zootopia several years ago where there was a scene of the sloth who worked as a service agent in the Department of Motor Vehicles. <laughs> Even if you didn't see the movie, you can probably imagine what that, it was kind of excruciating to watch, <laughs> um, but at the same time, it was really funny. Um, but I think we all know what it's like um, to be stalled in how we want to or need to move forward, to, to be forcibly slowed down in that way. Um, it's really challenging when we to be slowed down by circumstance or by other people um, when we want to move ahead. But it can be also really hard to self-impose this slowness to our day. And yet, um, even though slowing down can be hard, and, and maybe because slowing down can be hard, it is really important. 
Um, when we slow down, for example, in asana practice, uh, we give our brains a chance to actually rest from their busyness. In doing so, we give ourselves an opportunity to kind of dis ruminate, to discover, to reflect in a way that we may not have time for at any other point in our day. So I'm really all about going slower in asana practice, going deeper even. And I remember when I was interviewing Judith Lassiter uh, for my book several years ago, she talked to me about going at the speed of the body. She said, when the, 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 the mind likes to go fast, but the body likes to go slow. And so by slowing down, you're actually honoring the need of the body to go slower. So going at the speed of the body. Here are some examples of how you can do that in asana practice. One, um, one is to simply pause between your poses in a neutral or resting posture for a breath or two, you, using short pauses within the body of your practice to release tension, to soften, to breathe consciously, and to just regroup before moving on to the next pose is a great way to incorporate this idea of slowing down. You can slow down flows by taking extra breaths while moving in and out of postures or even during the holding phases of poses. You can slow down your movements and get more specific in your actions to deepen your awareness. You can do this you know, throughout your day. You can also close your eyes, even though typically um, we usually practice asana with eyes open. If I'm feeling rushed or hurried or anxious, I find that closing my eyes briefly sometimes really helps me to take that pause and be able to slow down. So slowing down. Renewal in the body by slowing down. Secondly, the second strategy I wanna talk about is renewal via the breath. And this has to do with the exhalation. Um, Donna Holloman wrote a classic book uh, in 1980 called Centering Down where she described tension as being the noise of the body. And um, you know, we know that everyday stresses, if we don't move them through physical activity, they take root in the tissues of our body. And this is uh, what leads to imbalances that can cause inflammation and disease. So we know that chronic stress affects digestion, suppresses the immune system, strains the circulatory system, can lead to hypertension and, and on and on. Therefore, having a reliable and effective way to move stress out of the body so it doesn't lodge and accumulate is so paramount to our health and well-being. And this clearing out needs to be done on a regular basis. So of course, conscious movement and breathing are great allies in this practice of kind of emptying out, clearing out. But the exhalation in particular, like if you take a few full exhalations through your mouth right now, how does that feel? The out breath is about releasing and emptying out. So allowing the cycle of breath to end and complete so that we can begin again. So conscious exhalations, emptying out with the exhalation. This is a great tool we have at our disposal um, really anytime to support release, to let go of what we don't need to carry with us. So focus on your exhalation to clear out. You can imagine yourself breathing out tension or worry and stress and, and just emptying out with that exhalation. It's a great practice. So that's number two, emptying out with the exhalation. Number three is renewing the mind. And um, the, for me, the best way for renewing the mind is to spend time in nature. Um, a teacher of mine once said something that I'll never forget. He said, when the mind is giving you trouble, take it out in nature. This has been such good advice that I have followed over the years, and it has served me so well. The, the writer and conservationist Terry Tempest Williams wrote, nature quiets the mind by engaging with an intelligence larger than our own. Nature quiets the mind by engaging with an intelligence larger than our own. Nature embodies the state of yoga. It is a manifestation of that same source energy. And therefore, it has the power to connect us back to that place within ourselves. So renew your mind by going out in nature, rest your mind and your senses on the sights, the sounds, the sensations around you, 
feeling, feel the wind on your skin, the temperature of the air, the, the way leaves blow on the trees. And even, even if you can't get outside, look out a window, observe the light, observe the clouds and the sky, focus your senses as much as possible on the natural world. It is a powerful way to restore the mind. And then the last uh, renewal strategy I wanna talk about is really um, on the level of spirit. And this has to do with letting go. Um, I think most of us um, work hard usually to stay on top of many areas of our lives, right? Our work, our relationships, our family, our home life. And, um, you know, it's, it's pretty amazing that yoga is perhaps um, one place in our lives where not only are we given permission not to know, but we're actually encouraged to do so. We are invited in yoga to relinquish what we think we know, to, to let it go for the sake of, of exploration and presence and discovery. And we do this again and again and again, and it's something we can also apply to our lives. Yoga asks that we temporarily let go of our ideas about what our bodies can and cannot do, our mental constructs and assumptions. Take a pause from the concerns of our day. And, and in this letting go, in this release, is how we enter into that space of pure being and feeling, and feeling where we find refreshment and renewal. Again, that source place lives in pure being, pure feeling. And I think our practice um, becomes an even more cherished refuge when we recognize that in yoga, we never have to have it all figured out. It's like, what a relief it can be to just not have to have it all figured out. And I, I think this is one of the great skills we cultivate um, in yoga, the beginner's mind, the, the ability to just let things be as they are, to let the questions be there, to let what is unresolved be there, to, to let go of all that we don't have control of and just focus on the here and now. And of course, this stance um, also allows insight to shine forth from a deeper place of knowing beyond our thinking minds. It, it restores our connection to spirit and in doing so, I think calls forth the wisdom of our hearts. It's like um, what I call the Shavasana solution. Like if you've ever been lying in Shavasana and suddenly the solution to a problem you've been thinking about suddenly appears, right? That aha moment or the answer to a question you've had, it's just there when you've let go, when you've stopped thinking about it. So letting go really, um, I think does allow for fresh insight and, and restoration of spirit. So to recap, the four strategies um, that I wanna offer you that I, again, use myself on a daily basis are the renewal in the body, slowing down, renewal via the breath, emptying out with the exhalation, renewal in the mind, spending time in nature, and renewal in the spirit, letting go. So, I hope that these serve you well and may you continue to experience yoga's power to renew and restore your spirit. May you experience the resilience and fortitude and perseverance that comes from taking the time to renew yourself on all these levels in the days and the weeks to come. Um, as a reminder, I'd love to, for you to try out my weekly classes if you're interested. You can use code FREE15, F-R-E-E-1-5 -E -E on my website barryrisman.com. And you can try out Offering Tree if you're a yoga teacher or wellness professional looking to expand or begin your online offerings. So thank you so much for being here and take good care. Bye.